This is one of the most uplifting episodes in footy history. Oh, for Tasmania? And for for all of us. Yeah, no, of course it is. Of course it is. New team, a, heart, a heartland footy team. The others were... The other two, which I really like those clubs, but they were, they were new frontiers. We're going to a traditional frontier and 100,000 members, Jared, as you announced at the top of the show, that is phenomenal, just phenomenal in one day. I know it's only 10 bucks, but it's, it, it's a commitment. It's an emotional commitment to the team. I, 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 it was a, a wonderful day. It's real. It's absolutely real for me. Jared, number two. It would be too cruel if this was toppled in Saturday's election. Yeah, so that's very real. There's, it's unimaginably cruel now that this remains a possibility no matter how small. Uh, this is all contingent on the building of a stadium, a roof stadium, 23,000 seats. And the opposition leader, Rebecca White, has run against this through her election campaign. Her latest position is, look, well, let's see if the team proves itself. Let's te see if it's worth it and then we can come together and see if the spend on the stadium is worthwhile. And I think it's... It's particularly pertinent in light of the cowardice that was showed in Queensland around what they're doing with their stadia, having snatched at the Olympics, got oh, them, yeah. and now they've shirked what they were going to do and the knock-on effect of that. So, forgive me, but I have no faith in the elected leaders around this country and their attitudes towards sport, which they treat as a, as a photo opportunity and, and a cheerleading exercise, but when it actually comes time to invest, commit, and be decisive, they lack the gumption to do so. So, unimaginably cruel if this wasn't to happen here. Imagine in 20 years' time if we look back and went, oh, for 12 months that was happening and then it never did. Never did. Oh, we lost it because we didn't put a roof on the stadium. Ooh. Couldn't, couldn't happen for no, The can't. other 18 clubs will need to have their lists in order. Oh, Buckley said this and Bucks is right. Of course they're going to have to get it in order. Because they're going to have to give them, as everyone's discussed today, they're going to have to give them draft picks and they're just going to give them kids. They're not going to build through the kids. It's really interesting. Get your list right. So straight away for a Tasmania executive, say Brennan Gale gets it. Right, who are we going after? Number one on the list right now, right now, would be McKercher. All right, so in four years' time, McKercher could be the first $2.5 million player, Jared, because the salary cap's going through the roof. People are going to be on 1.5 million in four years' time. He might be the first two million dollar player. I won't go too far, Ed. He's a good player. I only seen him play one, so <laughs> God, have a look at this kid. So these are the kind of Tasmanian players they'll go after. But with the money going around, they'll go after others. But they'll have to use their draft picks that they're given to go and get some established players. With they can use bigger contracts as well. So yeah, it's going to be different build to the Suns and Giants. Some massive news and some great news, uh, Johnny. You've been all over the introduction uh, of Tasmania, of course, the, the Devils, you forecast that, the green and yellow. I think there's a lot of intrigue now. Well, what we're really focusing on, Sam, is how this yeah. list will be built. Who will be the players in those jumpers. Well, what I can tell you tonight is it's going to be very different to Gold Coast and Greater Western Sydney. And this is a clear mandate from the AFL. We cannot have a team come in and win wood spoon after wooden spoon mm. and be uncompetitive and basically unwatchable. Mm. So the big difference that, that my understanding is is mm. that they're going to get very similar draft concessions. It might be picks 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 10, 11. Yep. But they're going to have to trade away multiple of those picks. Mm. And it's a win-win for the, for the competition. One, Tasmania is good straight away. Yep. They have to offload picks 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, yep. bring in established stars of the game yep. and, and the knock-on effect is if you are at ground zero in rebuild mode when this club comes in. So for West Coast at the moment? Exactly. Yep. So if you're West Coast or North Melbourne now and Tassie yep. was coming in, if it was like it was 10 years ago, you basically stuff. The yep. handbrake goes on your rebuild. Yep. Under this model, you're mm. not locked out of the top 10 of the draft. Mm. You can actually trade some players who aren't going to be there when you're contending and, and really dominate that pointy end. So you've got a Tasmanian team with not too many kids yep. that's mature enough to compete and you don't absolutely sabotage the clubs at the bottom. It's the first time I've heard that have to trade those picks. Yes. That's interesting. GWS was unwatchable for the first two years. They've beaten by 100 points every yep. second week. Now some players, Ralphie, are going to get very rich out of this. Have you got any information on how the salaries, etc., incentives could work? We keep on talking about sign-on bonuses. What the hell's a sign-on bonus? Mm. It sounds very mm. American. Mm. So I got to Can the I bottom of it tonight. Exactly. <laughs> so the Tassie team will come 
um, with uh, sign-on bonuses of between one million and one point five billion a million dollars. Billion. Going to be a lot. I tell you what, I'll go down there as the PR manager in their first year. That will be to attract those established players. So how does that work? Yep. So they use those sign-on bonuses at their discretion. So why would the clubs accept that when it's outside the salary cap? You're actually you're getting an extra 1.5 million bucks outside. So can the cap. I stop you there? What you mean by that 1.5 million dollars outside the cap yep. to attract players? That's, That's what correct. That is. So why will those clubs accept it? Because the bigger the sign-on bonus to their player, the bigger the compensation pick they will get back. Okay. So there'll be those picks they'll need to trade. Separately to that will be the compensation system. So you remember Gary Ablett went yep. to the Gold Coast. Uh, Geelong got two first-round picks because it was in the top tier of compensation. Mm. There'll be a similar system, a separate system there. And so those clubs will say, fantastic. Yes, we'll lose some quality players, but we get elite draft picks. Well, I can tell you one other factor as well that, yeah. that should not happen with this club. Gold Coast had to go from 48 players to 38 players inside four years. Mm -hmm. They were delisting blokes they didn't know about. They, they were still developing. They had no idea whether they were going to make it as footballers. So when this club gets an expanded list, if the AFL is smart, they'll let them keep it expanded for a, a lot longer window because you just don't know. You can't be making calls that early. Clarky, Andrew Dillon keeps saying 23,000-seat stadium mm. with a roof. Mm -hmm. With a roof. Yes. I think that they're missing a trick here, right? Because we know the elections this weekend and the new stadium's key to the whole bit. It's the biggest issue in Tasmania at the moment. A senior club executive said to me today, it is the biggest no-brainer in football. Build a stadium, save hundreds of millions of dollars, have no roof. Like, do you, do you need a roof on a small stadium to have a great experience at the football? I don't think you do. They're very expensive, these big roofs, John. <laughs> so build your shiny new stadium, save 300 million bucks on a, on a roof, and I feel like that's the compromise. That's the obvious compromise here. And that is what club officials are saying. It's the elephant in the room. Jay, can I ask you a question? Have mm. you ever sat at Marvel Stadium? Have I ever sat at Marvel yes. Stadium? Yes. Can you imagine if the roof was over level two, not level three? What would be the problem potentially? It would be a lot lower, wouldn't it? It would be. What do you mean? Well, I'm, I'm suggesting that on all this, on all the schematics, hang from the rafters. On all the schematics we've been shown so far, mm. it's not, it's not tall enough. It's, uh, uh, we need more space to get a roof on. You it's think the balls, balls can hit the roof? I think that I've spoken to some architects. You took a while to get to that, didn't you? <laughs> who think that is an absolute concern? And look, no stadium in New South Wales has a roof for what? For your reason, they're too expensive. So how yeah. about poor old Rebecca White? So she got a ticket to the event. Their Labor leader there, and all of a sudden she in the federal position. Now, mm. This is almost like running into someone like Bob Hawke after we just won the <laughs> mm. America's Cup. Yep. Just that jolt of electricity. It, it is so amazing. And she's got to try and say, I'm the person who's voting against this stadium. 100,000 foundation members, I yep. think, as of um, 30 minutes ago or whatever. It's been an extraordinary response. But I don't think the new stadium needs a roof.